Yeah, man, what, what's next, man? 2024. Um, absolutely nothing. <laughs> nah, man, I'm I'm uh I'm working on a little something. Mm. I know you sneaking joints out there, and uh I definitely need that Detroit Lions mom spaghetti collab sweater, please. I need it. Got Thank you, bro. Lord. I need that immediately. And my final question, 50 Set Eminem collab album. What's up? Where'd that come from? <laughs> bro, that I don't know whose idea that was, but that's crazy. I heard it through the grapevine. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yo, I'm trying to get him to make another album so bad. We need another 50 album, like really bad, bro. Oh, Fifth is on a roll right now. He's been on a roll since the tour, man. And I told him he needs to fucking whatever he needs from me. I'm here. That shit would be crazy though. A, an album with me and him. That, that's it right there. What it do, YouTube is coffee. Tapping back in, man. And Eminem, we got a lot to get into. The breakdown news, a lot. Let's get it though. As you see, Eminem currently had a rough day. He's experiencing what me as Bills Mafia. What a lot of fans comment, other individuals out there, you're going through that playoff hell, that early off season hangover, that off season mode, especially if you had a team that was really looking like a Super Bowl contender and you're exited out the playoffs, watching everything going on right now. The Taylor Swift Super Kelsey Brothers show, the reality show, is tough. And Eminem, the Lions was looking good for him but uh you see him flipping off the Niners fans Troy Lions made a lot of history this year but cut short early no Super Bowl ring they made the playoffs all that that's good money good for them but what did you think about that there what Eminem said in this recent interview with who kid I, I feel like like where did who kid just pluck that out of the air about the Eminem 50 cent collab album which I'm a feature guy back when Eminem signed 50 Cent. I couldn't wait to hear them collab and Banks and Eminem and other members of G-Unit and G-Unit and D-Twizzy and Obi Trice and D-Twizzy and G-Unit and, you know, uh, we all die one day off Obi Trice's Cheers album. One of the, or was that, I think that was Cheers. One of the dopest collabs of all time. Obi, Yayo as the hype man doing the ad libs. Banks, 50, Eminem, all of them came top tier with it. Some of the hardest verses any of them ever spit. It was lit. You know, I, I love the features. I was, they, they make interesting music features. It's what it is, you know. Comment anyone out there when you see artists signing with different labels and you immediately go to what kind of collaborative efforts you can get. It's, it's dope creatively. Like when Eminem signed Griselda, I was uh, underwhelmed and disappointed, I guess, as project after project kept dropping. And really only we got, how many collabs was there? Was it just bang or was there, there was a couple more, but the vibes were weird. We didn't get that many collabs, you know? But um, anyways, Fifth and M, a whole project. You heard Eminem talking about 50 Cent. He just did the final lap tour. He's out doing all these brands and all these business ventures he's got all the tv productions everything rap is secondary 50 cents been semi-retired in a way for a long long time and hearing that question the way eminem responded i don't know i feel like they almost just told us that that's gonna come eminem and 50 cent collaborative album let me know if you feel that way or what you take from that interview there eminem and who kid but the news doesn't stop there. The Lions lost. M50, could we get the album? That ain't it. Uh, this new track drops where Eminem shouts out J. Cole, who, if you recall, they had their little tension or whatever, but it was nothing major. J. Cole made some comments about Eminem, Elvis comparisons, stealing the sound, stealing the music. Eminem has, you know, joked off and called himself the rap Elvis and all that and J. Cole later went on to say it was just jokes man it was just jokes but in a good joke there's always some truth and that's a fact and he wasn't lying in what he said but he didn't mean it in a heinous way he respects Eminem as an artist as a rapper as a wordsmith and on this new joint he shouts out Cole so kind of continue some good vibes and good momentum between Eminem and J. Cole 
How about a J. Cole Eminem collab? But that wasn't it. Eminem had some things to say about Benzino and Coyle Ray. Now, before I carry on, man, Coyle Ray, poor, poor Coy, as Benzino, he's a guy originally, I kind of almost wanted to go in on him a little bit when making this video. Things have been tough for Zeno, you know, and the Eminem stuff, the beef. I know it's got to be frustrating. He can never get away from it. Uh, you know, he disses them. He says, I'm past the beef. He disses them. I'm past the beef. All the stuff we've seen in the public with the, the body cam footage, him losing his cool, um, the, the breakups when he was down and out, romantically heartbroken, things that a lot of human beings go through, you know, but a lot of us aren't celebrities and then on top of it a lot of us you know our, our body cam footage ain't going viral i'm sure a lot of individuals out there have body cam footage in the cut that um you know would be not something you would want everyone to see and would be a little bit embarrassing maybe but coiler ray inherits all this stuff from being benzino's kid and um poor coy you feel wrong about the eminem thing i don't know about the eminem thing i wasn't old enough to understand it i know that anything that has to do with eminem i don't have nothing to do with those times so don't involve me in it. i watched eight mile and i thought it was a great movie <laughs> you feel me i can tell you eight mile was crazy i you know that was one of the a, a great movie it was a great actor right. um so. so so if him reached out to do a record with you would you do it with him no I'm, no hell no unless, unless i got my father's blessing like i would sit down with my father first of all and bring it up to him so Coyle Ray wants nothing to do with any of the Eminem stuff, right? She thought 8 Mile was a good movie. He was a good actor. An Eminem feature, probably out of the question, unless her dad gave his blessings, which I almost feel like Benzino would give her the green light on that, but I don't think we'll ever see that, not in a million years. And keep this in mind as we're going to have some more news on this a little bit later in this video, as again, Eminem on this Doomsday Part 2 off the Lyrical Lemonade Jump Off. He mentioned Koi as well as Benzino. Check it out. This is what Eminem said. And he went in, man. He was spitting some ish. And it's crazy, too. You see some new ish and you're like, is this AI or something, man? I'm so sick of this AI ish. But he said, now I got a riddle. One condition. You mustn't laugh. What is the opposite of Benzino? A giraffe. Go at his neck. How the fuck is that? How can I go at something he doesn't have? Arms so short, he can't even touch his hands. When they're up above his head doing jumping jacks. Sorry, I don't mean to upset you. Ben, when I talk about all the debt you win, I hear that you've been creeping on the low in them cheap hotels that they catch you in. Well, I guess then I regret to inform you. Hate to spoil the day, but this doesn't bring me no joy to say. Guess that coil array features in the toilet, eh? Nah, sorry, y'all. I hate reading lyrics. It never does justice. But M's taking major jabs at Zeno there. He's in debt. What happened to the Benzino Crab Trap restaurant? Has anyone ate there? Is it any good? I don't know. But he's having a laugh at his financial situation. His uh, no neck having ass. And that uh, suspect footage of Zeno in his uh, bro sharing a room. And let's not forget right around the same time there was uh, that whole situation with a TRA and S individual and stuff that came out. Whack 100 was going in on him about uh, things of that nature. Preferential stuff. What Zeno's preferences are. It's wild m's going in you know and that's the thing with eminem too when he disses people or he does drop something eminem doesn't really do social media or tap into the convo in the blogosphere so when he does drop something you know trending things that happen in the news or certain situations like huh what would m say or what's m's response to this you get it way later you know like m could have had these in the arsenal for a long time McCoy responded and, you know, said, uh, misery loves company. Rat beef is washed. Basically, it's corny. She never said she wanted an Eminem feature, which obviously we just saw, <clears throat> you know, on that clip as well. And I don't know, man. You got to feel sorry, feel bad a bit for Coy Ray. Having a father who has roots into the hip-hop game, the music industry and stuff like that um, should be a plus. But I don't know, man. With Benzino inheriting all this stuff that he's had going on 
It almost feels like a minus. I don't know. I want to know what everyone else thinks about it. But for the most part, she seems to laugh it off, take it all for what it is. And hey, I'm going to push on focus, do me. But as far as Benzino, it's so crazy to hear this. As again, no, not really any telling what exactly made M go at Zeno in this, right? Like when Bang dropped way back when it did. And then there was a leaked version of Bang where there were some things that didn't come out. We weren't supposed to hear and we did. And it was controversial and all that. But he, like he dissed cannabis on that one. And it was like, what made M go back in and go in on cannabis? I, I don't know. Who knows why Eminem does what he does. But you hear all this and then it's so crazy right at the same time. I believe this is before this track drops. Zeno does this no jumper interview. And I don't know, like his whole outlook on the Eminem thing is quite different than you would think. As I stated, Zeno's been dealing with this for so long and he was involved in the Source magazine. Um, an iconic magazine is kind of a shame that it went out the way that it did. It still exists, I believe, but it's saying it's a shell of its former self is an understatement but Zeno's kind of gone back and forth like I said earlier from dissing and beefing to wanting to put it behind him or even at times wanting to make peace and it seems like he's kind of on some peace vibes right now in a different place in his life okay random hot topic question mm -hmm. but Dr. Umar went very viral uh, a couple weeks ago for his take, which was basically Eminem can never be considered as one of the greats or as the greatest rapper of all time, or presumably even he just assumed he thinks that Eminem's <laughs> value is kind of overstated within hip hop. Uh, would you agree with that? And if Eminem's not the greatest rapper of all time, could the greatest rapper of all time be white? Oh, as of course, I think now as hip-hop's evolved yes the great uh, yes he can be white uh, now because every every hip-hop is evolving and, and, and all races are really you know are putting in time into hip-hop and years gone by and mm -hmm. people are paying their dues as i've called it as far as dr umar i see where he's coming from um you know but then the argument is the same thing as like okay well Dr. Naismith invented basketball, then how could Michael Jordan be the best at basketball? And, mm. you know, the thing is, the thing is, the argument is that hip hop has taken, has been so personal to black people's lives other than it just being a music. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where I think the line gets blurred, the lines are blurred, because this, well, how we may look at hip hop, there's a certain white culture that might not look at it like that as far as hip hop goes. So in, in those, it depends on what lens you have on. Mm. Um, with, with, with Joe Buttons, it, I, you know, I've never seen nobody like be a fan. Like it's one thing about being a fan of somebody, but then it's another thing being on somebody's d <laughs> It's just, it's like, I can understand a fan, but then it's like when you on somebody's, that's just a, that's a personal thing, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and, and to me, with him, and I, and I think all, you know, everybody can have their personal favorites, but it's like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he don't cheer, he don't cheer like that for nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. the way he stick for Eminem, and it's not like he talks about him all the time, but when he does, he really, like, you know what I'm saying? And to me... I, you know what I'm saying? It's, I don't know, man. I think I think Dr. Umar, like me, just gets tired of that shit. Like, mm. bro, like, relax. <laughs> like, okay, he's good. Like, okay, this is 100 years later. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I can understand D Dr. Umar gets frustrated as, as I do. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a frustrating thing. M can rap. I always say this. I don't like even doing top five dead alive because I believe hip hop is so great and people have their own style it's hard to be like oh he's the greatest he's the like if you're listening to somebody's album and you love it then you love that artist mm. if you love it then you love that artist and you it's this it doesn't have to be better and who's better and who's the it doesn't have to be that way eminem raps a certain way like he puts out a certain type of music it's not like it's not like it really sounds that much like almost anything else that's popular it's, it's really his own lane of yeah. music you see what i'm saying so because that's not my lane, don't get mad at me. I think Eminem fans take it so personal that, well, he's the greatest. Okay, that he's the greatest to you, and that's cool. 
to me, he's not. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. Like, mm. Joe, Joe, Joe got the, the platform. And Joe, you got Dr. Umar up there. Like, my thing was Joe knew how to set off Dr. Umar. Mm. He set him off. That's a good point. He, he knew how to set Dr. Umar. Joe's, Joe's brilliant. He knew how to do that. And believe me, Dr. Umar got, cause, because the dude next to Dr. he got him good. I was like, oh, man. Well, keep in mind with Joe, he's the same guy who basically up his relationship with Eminem and Slaughterhouse by right. being brutally <laughs> honest about record. Eminem. It did, did yeah. a whole diss record. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I used to be like, come on, man. Like, listen, I swear to you, my thing wasn't about the music. It just wasn't. Like, I had my own personal issues on what I thought of hip hop. And that's probably where I made the mistakes by involving the source because the source is supposed to be for the masses. Mm -hmm. And I've let my personal, and I've said that on math, and that was, that was a mistake. That was wrong. I wouldn't call it a mistake, but being business-wise, it was wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you're not supposed to do that. That's not good business. And um, So Joe Budden podcast is kind of a podcast I've got away from listening to for a while. It used to be something I listened to on the regular every episode that dropped. And it's wild, too, when I do tap into it, stories going on or just different things that go viral or catch a piece of an episode here or there. It's crazy. Like the, the podcast looks so different. And a lot of people will say it's never been the same since Rory and Maul. But, um, you know, that Dr. Umar situation was a very deep conversation, went crazy viral. But um, I I'm lost as to what, like, Joe Budden, the way Zeno's talking about him. He's almost, or kind of is referencing Joe Budden as a stan. And I don't know, am I bugging? Did I miss something? I always thought, like, Joe and Eminem had a tricky past not saying they had beef or whatever I know I, I feel like they've got over some of the issues that they did have Slaughterhouse and all that but the way Zeno was referencing Joe was like Eminem could do no wrong what, what did I miss but you hear Ben Zeno um you know saying that in his opinion the GOAT the greatest the top MC in his opinion could be a white dude with the way hip hop has evolved and changed but at the end of the day man when it comes to music and stuff like that I don't know why this is such an obsessive thing with the lists and who's this and who's that you know art whatever it may be music imagery movies podcasts whatever art form individuals love to indulge in and you know rock with it however they rock you know it's art it speaks to people in different ways everyone has their own feelings that it art does different things for different individuals i don't know why that like this list stuff always has to be such a thing you know but uh that wasn't all that uh zeno said um but i, I don't listen to his music anyways mm. and it's not just him there's not a black artist that I don't listen to their music anyways. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's, it's all right. I know it, our situation's polarized because of the beef, because of us going back and forth. But that's what hip hop was anyways. Like, big deal. We went, I made a few songs. He made a few songs. So what? I've never even met Eminem. Mm. I, would I would love one day. I mean, before I go and before he go for us to sit down. And just have a conversation about hip hop and have a conversation about I me. Mean, that would be so epic to me because it's bit with us, it's bigger than hip hop. You have way more in common than you have that separates. You. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. And and again, again, a lot of times it'd be Eminem's fans that it, yeah. it don't even be him. It's his fans that make you just most of the shit that I've said on the internet is probably because of his fans, not even him. Because mm. he don't even he don't even speak on shit. Ever. He barely does. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? People ask me, and then you know, you know, I talk about it um, because I guess it's a part of my it's a part of my history. So I don't I don't run away from it. But I try when I answer it, and every time I do an interview, I try to answer it in a way that people can understand that they could get a different take on it. Like I'm not racist. Um, I've been a part of, I've grew up in a city that there was racist people in there and I grew up under racist conditions, but I, I'm not racist. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, like, you know, racist people don't, even when they're kids, like, this is true. Like, you know, like my kids, 
you are with your kids, like the, when you look at your kids' friends and you can see your kind of parents' virtues, unless you just live in a place where there's nothing. Like if, if your kids are playing with multi-different kids, then you know what I'm saying, then your parents are okay. I grew up in a place where kids were taught not to be around other kids and not to go to school with them and just be, you know, not be around. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that frustrates me more. Man, Boston, the mean streets of Boston, as Eminem once joked on uh, that one Benzino disc, which obviously, you know, Boston is what it is. But one thing I've definitely heard from individuals from there, from uh, athletes that go travel around and play in different places, Boston always has this stigma of where a lot of athletes will tell you they, you know, get the most heckling and racial slurs and things of that nature and it's just kind of something that's always been a uh, ingrained in the history of boston that it's kind of known to have some uh deep racism and stuff like that and as far as the stands go that's interesting to hear benzino say that uh you know that a lot of the times when he was reacting and he would go off the rails and say certain things as you see he said things about adam 22 before even though they're having this nice combo right now you know as again a, mo a benzino's an emotional dude a lot of times he said he was reacting to the stands and shout out to as is as is oh you know tell you the same thing um you know and that's always a conversation that comes up with eminem fans and stands and you know uh, some eminem stands uh, are not even really hip hop fans and don't even care about hip hop, the art form, the history, the bars, none of that. They just are very obsessive about Eminem in pretty much a toxic way. And that's, you know, something that it's got to be recognized and understood, in my opinion. But, um, you know, being, I guess, a adversary, a enemy or an arch rival of Eminem, you know, drawing heat from the stands is something else. Again, just ask as is. Uh, I've seen some of the message he gets from the stands. It's crazy. A lot of racial slurs, a lot of real foul stuff. And, you know, like that's not uh, Eminem wouldn't want that. And that's not hip hop at all, uh, you know, to be on some old racist ish. And, uh, you know, personally, like hearing Benzino say that you can feel that that really does come from a personal place from him and from Boston and everything like that you know like that ain't hip-hop man this stan's got to cut that ish out with all that just racism which i feel like m has kind of told the stands to chill the fuck out uh, a couple times and cut the fluckery in the in the foulness but all in all the pretty interesting interview and take from benzino looking at the whole eminem situation now at this point is you know he he was I don't even know personally why he would even respond to the stands that say racist things to him and then turn around and call him racist. I, I don't even know why he gives them the satisfaction or retention of responding to those types of individuals. You know what I mean? But uh, Zeno built the source or was a part of the source, an iconic piece of history and hip hop history with a white dude, Dave Mays, who now is uh doing some other type stuff in hip-hop i believe he was a part of this right is isn't that his platform that these suge knight podcasts jail phone calls are coming from i think is from dave mays but it seems benzino just kind of wants to put this uh behind him and even would like to sit down and have a conversation with eminem but it's just wild to hear the diss and the things eminem is saying and then hear benzino saying this like, what's the odds of the timing on that? It's it's pretty crazy. And I personally hate the fact that, I don't know, even Benzino at times has come off as a bitter person or an obsessive person or what have you. I do hate the fact that, and I know Benzino has to hate it because he's living it, that at times that's all that it comes down to when, you know, it's about benzino sitting down with him is asking about eminem when he was a part of the source and a part of um history and hip-hop history and then you take all the stuff that's happened like i said the the body cam footage and just other stuff like that dude's uh been through a lot and i don't know you see he's trying to 
I guess, pick up the pieces, if you will. I don't really know much about the financial stuff M was clowning on him for. But um, I don't think that conversation between M and M or anything like that will uh, ever happen personally. Let me know if you think it, if you think it will. But uh, there you have it, man. A whole lot of M and M ish in the news. The 50 Cent album was M sending us a message saying it's gonna come. We'll have to wait and see. Interested to know what everyone thinks out there. The new track, Doomsday 2, Benzino this. Where did that come from? Uh, Coit LeRae, she's just trying to push on. No Eminem feature coming, but I, I think we already already knew that. We, we all already knew that. And she tries to maneuver through the game with everything she's inherited from her father. Benzino's latest interview here, what he had to say about Eminem, the beef, the history, the Source magazine, and Eminem's Lions taking that out. Let's discuss it all in the comments. I thank y'all for watching. Stay tuned for more. Let's talk in the comments. It's coffee and I'm gone, y'all. Peace.